Right, good Welcome back. Okay, day 40 already. Hi, Booster Build. Yes, indeed. Thank you for your cool comments on that in the last video. Thanks ever so much. I really appreciated that. Now, today I want to get onto the regulator rectifier. Now, you remember when we said, or I said, what I might do is mount it up in the tail because it's well out of the way. And a load of you cried straight away, oh no, that you'll get it overheated, it will catch fire and the world will end. Yes, you're quite right. Your regulator rectifier must have cooling air passing it all the time. Otherwise it will overheat, cause all sorts of problems. And I don't want that. So I'm going to mount it in the original position on the left rear flank of the bike where it was from the factory, pretty much. I've cut the lugs off that it used to bolt to because I wanted to make that sexy tail frame. So I've got to make a new mount that I can securely bolt it to because it's very important that it's securely and sol solidly mounted to the bike and then plugged into the original harness. A few of you said move it to the front of the bike. Yes, that's easier said than done. It truly is. Think about ripping all the wires wiring loom apart to strip out just those wires and then no, don't even go there. It makes more problems than it's worth. I'm going to mount it where it's meant to be mounted by the factory. I kind of like that. I want to keep as much of this factory as I can, but change the look of it completely. And that's a great way to do it. So this is where it is today. Regulator rectifier mounted on the left hand side. Once it's securely mounted, think about it. What about a little scoop, a little uh, English wheeled aluminium scoop over it to cover it up and catch all the cooling air as you ride along and perhaps some little louvers on the back of it or some mesh on the back of it to pass that cooling air out the back as well. So you've got passing air all the time, but it's nicely covered up as well. Now that would look really cool if I can pull it off. So that's gonna to be today. I've gotta to mount it to a beefy mount first and then we can move on see if we can make something to cover it up. So wish me luck, eyes down for full house. Let's see how it goes. thick in places and on corners more like six mil thick and it's flexible plastic my god that's strong and snap Here we go, painless enough. Now, obviously it would have been nice to be fancy and weld plates and all the rest of it in there, but absolutely no need whatsoever. Riv nuts, they're brilliant. I love riv nuts and they're fitted in the original tail frame that I cut off by the factory. Riv nuts were everywhere on this. Now this is a steel tube, top quality stainless steel tube, 316 seamless food grade steel tubing. And I put stainless steel heavy duty riv nuts in it. Now, obviously, that's strong enough to hold just a humble little regulator rectifier. That's not going to be the issue. And there's no weight going to be on this back section whatsoever. And the holes are behind the point where there's any weight. So no issues whatsoever. These riv nuts, if you've never fitted them before, they're the simplest way to fit a thread into a piece of steel that you'd ever believe. They're amazing. If you've never used them, they're fantastic. Have a look, get yourself some. They come in a bag, you buy them quite quantities. You can fit them with normal pot rivet pliers. You can even fit them with a nut and bolt. You don't need any form of tool to fit them. Just a nut and a bolt, wind it in against it. Just the nut's too big for the bolt, so it's not threading. Put the nut against it as a bearer to bear the load and wind the nut in up against that nut and just keep winding it and it will squash 
the rivet nut into place. They're basically squeezed into place. If they ever turn or spin, a couple of things you can do. You can either tack weld them in place, which I've done in the past. Not really the ideal way to do it, but they ain't gonna move then. Or best still, you can just drill them out, fit another one. That's the easiest way to do it. But anyway, a humble little regulator rectifier, fitted in the correct position, leaning slightly downwards as it was when it was fitted factory, not straight up, and in a nice unobtrusive position out of the way of the silhouette of this tail. So it's not hanging down lower or anything, it's not gonna encroach here. And I can bring a panel out round that now. So that's the next thing. I'm gonna make a quick cup of tea, put this panel on, trim round it, that's why I left it long, and then measure a little piece of aluminium. See if I can roll it to cover that up which will look really cool. Well, it might. <laughs> Let's see, shall we? Okay, today is a day of kind of messing about. Um, that's done, trimmed that out, ready to go. I've probably just spent the last hour rooting the wiring. Now that big piece of loom that was hanging out this side, it needs unwrapping, slightly modifying in its shape and then rewrapping in the new shape. I'm sure if you've ever done relocation of wiring harness in the past, you know yourself, it's quite easy to do because the strapping that goes round the wiring harness, it acts like a, I don't know, a plaster cast and it holds it in shape. And if you try and bend it to go in a different direction, actually you can fracture the wiring inside because it's being held so tight by the binding. But if you unbind it, it all becomes floppy and loose like a jellyfish and you can move it anywhere and rebind it. Now, I've done that, had a little reroute, got rid of that, it's all up underneath here for now. And there's the plug to plug into the regulator rectifier. But I've had a rethink on this. I was thinking of making just a little panel to come over that and kind of, make a scoop, which I was I said earlier on this morning, because it's 3.30 p.m. now, and that's where I've got so far. But rethink, I need to do a practice, because I reckon I can do that whole side. If I cut a big piece of the bus panel, the crashed bus panel, that old one mil stuff, and have a practice run today, and just try and beat a panel out, I'm thinking, run a panel along there, but when I get to this point, slit it, and then wheel it out to make literally a scooped out panel that's part of the panel. That would be cool. Maybe put a mesh in the front to stop badgers crawling in, you know, that sort of thing. And then just blend it back into here. I don't know, uh, but there we are. So I'm gonna get some of that bus panel now. And for the rest of today, the next couple of hours, I'm gonna see if I can beat and wheel out a kind of shape to go down that side. And then when it's done, the idea is to rivet it to this kind of battleship style, airplane style, you know rather than weld it because I can't weld aluminium. So there we are. Let's cut a big piece of that alley out and see if I can make a mess. <laughs>
no dents. Right, there we go, another long day. Eight hours today to create that and bolt that thing on. But it's been invaluable yet again. Practice panels are worth their weight in gold or aluminium, and it really is the best way to do it. Now, this is a complete pig's ear. It looks horrible before you even say it. It truly does. That's just nasty. However, I've learned so much about this metal. This thin one millimeter aluminium that came from the bus panel, it stretches insanely far without cracking or splitting. So I'm gonna order some one millimeter sheet metal. I've run out of this stuff now, so my practice panel is done. I've got no more, but this today, was invaluable because what I'm gonna do instead, rather than trying to stretch this pocket into one panel and make it all in one piece, cool as that might be, I'm gonna go a slightly different way. I think what I'll do is I'll make a pocket for the regulator rectifier that fits perfectly over it, something a little bit more square than this. And then this little bulge here, that's just not nice, is it? As a little round dimple, it kind of looks like a big dimple and it's just horrible. I think what I'll do instead is I'll make something that's the same shape as the pocket for the regulator rectifier. In there, underneath there, is the start solenoid. Simple as that, but it has to be there because it sits neatly on the frame and it bolts to the frame and that's its place. So what I might do is make two perfectly rectangular pockets that go over that, bolt them to it, because the mount for the regulator rectifier has got three bolts. So I'll mount the pocket straight to those three bolts. It's got its own little vent pocket, little scoop on the front like that, little louver or vent or some mesh on the back to vent the warm air and that'll work fine. And then instead, make a flat panel. I mean, it'll, it won't be entirely flat because it has to have this curve at the front to come from the seat frame out to the outer frame because they're slightly out of line. But it will be basically a flat panel with two holes cut in it to go over those pockets and then rivet them round again, like an aircraft style, and then rivet that to the tail as well. So the whole thing will start to look pretty cool. So I think I'll go that way instead. But today has taught me how to make these pockets, how to stretch them, how to put creases in them, stretching stuff two different directions by turning the panel over in the wheel. Honestly, practice panels are priceless. You learn so much from them. This eight hours today has been the eight hours well spent. It truly has. But there it is, can't do any more. So join us in the next one. I'm gonna take a slight change of tack in the next one. I'm gonna show you some amazing tools that have arrived, something that I've wanted for a long, long time, something you've been reminding me to get and nagging me to get for a long, long time, and some cool stuff we're gonna review from that Motorbat stock that came in. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe, and we'll see you for the next one. Yeah.